George Gross was a Dada artist prior to the war, and that's not that uncommon. He's also on the verge of a nervous breakdown during the war, during which time he was declared fit for active service. Now, this is really, really common in World War I. They will refer to it as shell shock, and for a moment, I need to place you in their position. You're in the trenches, you're fighting. Now, rifle fire and machine gun fire is one thing, but artillery, you hear the whistling and you never know what's going to happen. It can quite literally obliterate someone 10 feet from you and you survive, a little dirtier from the mud that's been thrown up, but it's fine. Now, live with that for months, this idea of almost a constant Russian roulette of shells falling unpredictably. The next one could be your end. That's going to cause some significant stress, and that builds up over time, and you end up going through a nervous breakdown, which, as I said, they referred to as shell shock. In the modern day, we would refer to this as PTSD, and that's exactly what Gross goes through. And in reaction to all of this, he will create Fit for Active Service. Now, he's creating this in 1916 and 17, and what we're seeing at the time is a shortage, shortage excuse me, of soldiers. In fact, by the time we get towards the end of the war, Ludendorff, a German general who kind of took control of the war effort towards the end, actually wanted to start drafting, start drafting in women. Uh, between the ages of 16 and 24, never gets it through, but tries because they are so short of people. And so they're constantly taking people who have amputations, who have been through shell shock, etc., and they're throwing them back out in the trenches. Obviously, this isn't going to end well. So what you're seeing is an image that satirizes the military's willingness to overlook personal well-being for the fatherland. Here we see a depiction of the separation of the civilian and the military authorities, as we talked about already uh, with some of the German expressionist sculpture. What we're dealing with is this separation. The military wants the war to continue. They're constantly convinced that they will win, whereas the civilian population is done with it. They're starving to death. Everything is falling apart, but it doesn't really matter because the military has effective effectively taking control of the government. And so that's what we're seeing. And we see the good doctor with an ear trumpet listening into uh, the skeleton. KV is shorthand for fit for active service. We have the military board here who don't actually seem to be paying much attention. They're just listening for those words. And the soldier, or in this case, the skeleton will be sent out. In the meantime, we see all of this industry going on in the background. And of course, we know that that industry is purely military. None of this is going towards, say, feeding the civilians or taking care of the civilians because, again, the military has taken everything over. Now, this is entirely based on Gross's personal experience, and it takes the form of almost what we would consider today a political cartoon, even though it's an etching and one that is particularly poignant for the German experience in World War I.